Casper Donier presents the appetizer from Seattle. He cooks a non-traditional version of the Italian dumpling, gnocchi, flavored with fresh basil and spinach. Then it's off to Atlanta, where Jerry Coscala offers southern comfort with braised lamb hocks served with that famous sweet Georgia onion, a roasted Vidalia. Dessert comes from Chaya Conrad in New Orleans. It's a luxuriant confection called French Silk Chocolate Pie, flavored with amaretto and presented in graham cracker almond crust. Caspar Donier began his career in his native Switzerland, then over the years worked in Vancouver, Canada, and in the United States at Houston. In 1989, he opened his classy namesake restaurant in Seattle, wisely located near the Seattle Center and the Coliseum. His appetizer is basil spinach gnocchi. For our uh, light gnocchis, we, uh, we do uh, the, the French style gnocchis, which are uh, with a pot of choux. We bring water, salt, and the butter to a rolling boil. Once the butter is melted and the liquid is on a rolling boil, we add a all-purpose flour all at once into the pot. Pot of choux is cream puff dough. Okay. And uh, quickly stir it until, uh, until the flour uh, builds a, a ball and comes off the side of the pan. We take it off the stove and transfer it into our uh, KitchenAid machine. At, uh, at this time we let the machine running at uh, low speed and cool the dough completely down. Julienned basil will be added later. At this time, I, uh, I chop the uh, basil or slice it in uh, small strips. Now that um, the dough is uh, cool, we made some uh, spinach shoes. We add uh, the raw spinach shoes slowly into the mix. Okay. Once uh, the dough absorbed uh, the, uh, the um, spinach juice, we add one egg at a time to the gnocchi batter. And we have to make sure that uh, it absorbs it uh, completely. Don't add them too quickly. Okay. Okay. We add some uh, uh, ground nutmeg a little uh, fresh ground pepper. And uh, the basil. Okay. Once everything is well combined, we take it out of the machine and uh, place it into a pastry bag. In the meantime, we, we have some uh, hot water boiling. We uh, season it with a little bit of uh, salt. And uh, then we, uh, we take a little bit of olive oil. Or I have to get a clean one. Dirty that up. Take a little olive oil. And uh, 
Chris, Chris has the bowl we're gonna bake the gnocchis in. You can do it in the virtual bowls or you can put it in a, a large gratin pan. We'll take the gnocchi. And then with the help of a knife, we make little dumplings and drop them in the hot boiling water. You can, you do have to do that in a few steps. You cannot do it all, all at once. You have to do that maybe in, in four, four times. The method used here is closer to the one employed in making the German dumpling Spätzle, rather than the stiffer dough associated with gnocchi. Turn the heat a little bit down. Once uh, you poach the gnocchi for roughly one minute, they will flow to the top, and then with a slotted spoon, you transfer them into the serving tray. This process you can definitely do ahead. You can do that uh, day before, and uh, so you don't have to do the gnocchi's last minute. Uh, the gnocchis can be served either with tomato sauce or a cream sauce. It all depends how many calories you would like. I serve it today with a Asiago cream cheese sauce. We'll take some uh, heavy cream, a pinch of uh, red chili flakes, and uh, a little bit of salt. Bring that to a boil and uh, Add Asiago cheese. I do not reduce the sauce too much because of the starch of the gnocchi. It will evaporate uh, when you bake it. Okay. Should put that in here. Okay. Okay. The cream is uh, on a boil, so I add the uh, cheese to it. Asiago is a hard grating cheese from northern Italy. It's made from cow's milk. Okay. Spoon the sauce over the gnocchis. Okay. Then I, with the remaining cheese, I just sprinkle the cheese on top. Place it in a 400 degree oven and uh, bake it until uh, it forms a nice brown crust. Okay. 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 The gnocchis are now nicely browned on top. Well, uh, garnish it with a nice basil leaf, and uh, we serve that as a as an appetizer. If if you want it as a main course, you definitely can serve a bigger portion and serve a salad on the side. Jerry Klaskala is a chef consultant who has been associated with several restaurants, including the Buckhead Diner and Horseradish Grill. He opened Canoe in the late 90s. It was being built during the taping, which was shot at a cooking school. Here are lamb hocks with Vidalia onion. We're going to start with the lamb shanks. Now, this is a very untraditional uh, approach to lamb shanks. This is treating the lamb more as oso buco. And since we're in the south and we're in Atlanta, Georgia, um, these are now my lamb hocks. And uh, 
we'll be using the, the four shank of the lamb. Uh, the long bone's been removed and we're just doing with working with the center cut on uh, the lamb shanks. Now you might choose to tie them or you may choose not to. If you choose to tie them, they'll, stay, they'll keep their shape a little bit better, more of a little round, compact shape. As in preparing osobuco, you want to cook it. The most critical thing will be when it's braising, will be the slow cooking, the slow cooking technique. The lamb is seared in a combination of hot oil and butter. The shanks are turned until thoroughly browned on all surfaces, including the edge. This takes a while. Now when the lamb is good and brown. It's removed to a plate. The grease is discarded and a little butter is used to soften a mirepoix in the same pan. Our onions. Celery. And carrot. Next, we'll add the tomato. Whole cloves of garlic. And then the tarragon. At this point, we have the red wine. and then we'll allow the, the wine to reduce. The wine is reduced by two thirds. Okay, the wine's reduced. I'm gonna put the lamb, lamb hocks back in. The lamb stock. This is obviously a fairly reduced lamb stock. Bring that just to a simmer. The pan is covered tightly and goes into a 325 degree oven for two to two and a half hours until very tender. And we seal the pan. Next we're working with, this is a very short time item that we get down in, uh, in the Georgia area. These are Vidalia green onions. These are the spring onions uh, from Vidalia, Georgia. They don't travel very far out of the area and everything everyone's used to the, more of the dried variety. These are the spring onions that we use this time of year. The onions are trimmed and halved then put into a baking dish. They're a side dish for the hawks. And then what we'll do is we'll season the bottom of the dish. Okay. 
And then the onions are placed cut side down in the casserole. And we'll place them in the oven. At 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes, or until browned and tender. Another vegetable side are carrots, butter beans, peas, and green onions, all cooked in a little chicken stock. The pan juices from the hocks are strained before presentation. Roasted Vidalia onions, spring onions. And a little of the fresh tarragon. Chaya Conrad grew up prophetically in upstate New York near the CIA. She went there and externed in New Orleans as part of the program. After graduation, she worked in Hudson Valley, then returned to New Orleans. Now pastry chef at Dickie Brennan's Steakhouse, here's her French silk chocolate pie. In order to do the crust, we're going to take graham crackers and sugar. butter. And blend it together. After you get that blended together, just add your almonds. You're going to want to press it into place. The crust is pressed into a springform pan. It's most easily done by starting with the sides and then working the crust toward the middle. Now the chef prepares the filling. Melted bittersweet chocolate is used. Using the paddle attachment, butter and sugar are creamed. In order to prepare the filling, we're going to take the butter. It's one cup of butter. sugar, and you want to cream that. You can let that go. While that's creaming, you want to whip your egg whites or egg yolks. This is the liqueur amaretto. The yolks are sitting over hot water and should be whisked constantly. They will be beaten to the pale yellow ribbon stage. The bittersweet melted chocolate will be added to the creamed butter mixture and the two will be combined.
mixture is then put into the... for at least two hours and if you can let it refrigerate overnight that's ideal. This is whipped cream flavored with amaretto and almond extract. 